Hello, welcome, good day, and happy modding. Thank you for joining today. And uh, as always, just a quick review about our soundtrack. Hey oh, what's up, Gonzo? Good day to you, and thank you for joining, and thank you for the soundtrack. The <laughs> beginning shell ritual is out of the way. Uh, and yeah, quick, so let's just jump right into plans for today. Um, first thing we're going to do after, you know, reviewing what's going on is, uh, let's, hey, let's make a Lua mod. More on that in a moment. Um, we want to wrap up 5.10.2 this weekend. Wanted that to happen last weekend. You know how these things happen, though. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, a couple new GitLab issues came in. Big thanks to everybody there. Uh, we'll try to, if we have time, take a look at some of that. And then, as always, we'll update the website, beta, the live one, whatever, as needed. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Going right into it. Um, had kind of a wild idea idea yesterday to, uh, you know, hey, let's just make a Lua mod on the stream. There happens to be a, hopefully, simple idea that I had um, for some time that I think we could do pretty quickly on the stream. And uh, as I wrote here, um, the intention would be from nothing to a shipped product, meaning something you folks and anybody else could download uh, from the internet using my new mod template. And I'll show you that in just a moment. Um, more on this in a moment. And yeah, so the idea is uh, to implement MCP's two-handed weapon removes shield feature. So let's go ahead and actually look at that real quick. Um, and yet, and just to plant the seed, if anybody's got, you know, a name idea, please help me out here. Cause I'm not sure, you know, MCP two-handed weapon remove shield seems like a pretty mechanical name that's not fun. Help me out. Uh, okay, so let's run. MCP. I'm on Linux again. Uh, so got to run it through Wine, but here we go. And the specific option I'm talking about is this one right here. Two-handed weapon remove shield. Unequips the shield excuse me, when equipping any two-handed weapon, you no longer can benefit from the armor rating of the shield while both hands are occupied. Um, pretty straightforward to do, I think, with a Lua mod, right? Right now, even for uh, 0.48's Lua. So with that in mind, uh, <clears throat> as I previously mentioned, some time ago I came up with this idea, I think I've talked about it maybe on the stream a few times, uh, about a mod template. You know, I've got various mods... And they all have kind of the, hey, Altariel, good day, welcome. Thank you for joining. So glad you're here. Um, there you go. I accidentally clicked on this, but this fits perfectly. So the mods that I kind of, you know, release or whatever, they all have a, a similar format, right? If you're no stranger to my work, you've seen something like this. Kind of a, just a, I'm a dark mode user, but if you're light mode, it'll show up light, I guess. Um, but just a simple website, maybe with some pictures, install steps, blah, 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 something like this. And I had the idea a while ago to make this into a template, um, which is this thing. And, uh, I never really got around to promoting it too much because it's, you know, it's, it's driven by a command line script. There's a lot of assumptions based on having a Linux environment and, uh, you know, just in general, it's not something I would want to suggest to somebody at this point. Um... But nonetheless, it's here, and I thought, you know, hey, well, we could look at the creation of a fully fledged out mod, um, and also uh, take a look at the sort of the publishing process that I use that's fully automated. So, I digress, without further ado. Um, eventually, this would be, and so that goes back to what I wrote here, that eventually this would be some kind of a web-based form where you have like a website. Hey, Santa, welcome, my friend. So glad you're here, dude. Good to see you. I'm um, just gonna make a Lua mod today is what we're talking about. I'm about to start coding it up. So yeah, glad you're here, dude. Been too long. Um, but yeah, eventually this would be behind some kind of uh, answer my phone. Oh, <laughs> whoops. I will, I'm sorry, did you call me? All right, we'll talk later. Um, Eventually, this would be like some kind of a website you could go to where you would say, I want to start a new project and blah, blah, blah. And there's just like two or three things that you need to provide us. Um, so, yeah, let's get into that right now. So, as of now, you have to uh, 
Right now you have to do the whole command line thing. But again, you know, the intention is long term, you know, this is going to be some kind of a shiny thing that's a little more fun to use. So, okay. Um, oh, you know what, too? And I had a thought. Let's run MCP again and let's have it at the ready because I'm going to take their um, description here, patch description. And I think we're going to use it or close to what they're doing here. So, oop. All right. Don't try that at home. Uh, so let's go ahead. I don't yet have a name for this, but uh, let's see. Um, we'll just call this a shield honey quip for now. And then if we have a better name, we can just, you know. Hey, Sector. Welcome. Good morning, and thank you for joining. Glad you're here, my friend. About to uh, create. So today's focus, I'm going to make a Lua mod. That's what we're doing right now. We're going to use a template that I made some time ago. Um, and you'll note here I had to do the dash dash recursive argument because part of my package is uh, the stuff that uh, <laughs> hey thank you yeah it's my um it's my GitLab beard for my work project and then now I just like having it so <laughs> excuse me <clears throat> um, but yeah so my projects all have the website as I showed before so that's what the recursive is for it's pulling in some stuff um, some plugins for the website and some JavaScript. Getting all that for free. And as I said before, the whole entry point... Whoops. Whoops. Let's go into uh, shield and equip. The whole entry point to this idea of the template is this thing right here. So, go to forktool.sh and just run it with no argument. And then it prompts you stuff. So, um, please enter your new mod's name. No special characters. Dash instead of spaces. All lowercase. Again, this is the kind of thing where you would put in some kind of user-friendly name, and then the website would make a slug. That's effectively what this is, a slug out of it. For now, we gotta do it this way, because I just don't got enough time till 2090, you know what I mean? Um, enter a description for the new mod. So this is where the MCP description will come in handy. Let's see if I can copy it out of here. Nope! That might just be a weird clipboard-ism. Here we go. Yeah, I got it. All right. Um, we're just going to use that for now. Enter the GitLab account name. So this will be modding-openmw. But if this were, you know, Gonzo, uh, it would be Gonzo, you know, whatever your GitLab account uh, slug is. There we go. Okay. And so with that, um, we have a new repo and a bunch of files made up. So let's just really quick. Um, one of the things, again, is the website. So let's go ahead and just run that. We'll install the files for the website. Cool, and just like that, we have a we have the website. Obviously, we'll have to take a new screenshot. We'll probably try to make a GIF for this um, to sort of maybe demonstrate somehow equipping a two-handed sword, for example. We'll de-equip the, unequip the shield. But yeah, so anyway, we've got the basic website here. Some stuff we'll want to change eventually, but we've got changelog, readme, all that stuff. Points to a GitLab repo that doesn't exist yet, <laughs> and that's why it's asking to sign in. So yeah, all right. But what else? I mean, isn't the point of this a mod, not a website, right? Yes, we have that too. I'll just make sure we erase everything. Let's open up the folder here. And let's just type make. And now we got a zip with the mod. And yeah, actually there is a default mod that I wrote um, to come with the template. And so let's just take a quick look at that right now. Mm, let's do this. Okay, yeah, so this is something, again, that I wrote some time ago, and it's just a demonstration kind of purposes mod, but I heavily commented the code to, like, really explain what's going on here for somebody who <clears throat> maybe has, like, a basic understanding of coding, or maybe they're interested in learning coding, and so they could look at this, and it's an example that works, and uh, shows the fundamentals of the things you want to do, like the very basics. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, starting from the top, I'm not going to read everything. Um, I will have a link in the description of the video for this uh, thing if you're curious to read it for yourself. But we're going to kind of take a step back and we're going to look at uh, some of the basics of OpenMW scripting. And so, um, if you've ever used the Lua mod, you know this. If you haven't, 
The uh, entry point for a mod that is using Lua stuff is a .omw scripts file. And this is just a text file that tells the engine what script to load and the context in which to load it. Um, and if, so if you're not used to OpenMW Lua scripting, that can be kind of like, whoa, what's, what are you talking about? And uh, so I will refer you to, uh, and this will be linked in the description as well, I'll refer you to the OpenMW Read the Docs website. Um, we're looking at the 0.48 version specifically here, just to not get confused with the bleeding edge new stuff. <clears throat> but uh, looking at the possible flags here, uh, we can see kind of a rundown of all the things that we can use and kind of uh, just a brief description of what they do. Now, in this case, it's gonna be a player script because we need to affect what's equipped on the player. But maybe, you know, you have something that is uh, maybe uh, attaching, uh, this is a 0 0.49 feature, but you're putting like an activator on something. That happens at the global level um, and not like on a local individual basis. And why the distinction between global and local? It's because of the potential and uh, future plans for multiplayer, right? Um, in the current multiplayer fork of OpenMW, you have Lua scripts that are effectively like uh, servers just for the server, and that would be kind of a global context, right? The server is everybody versus your local client. So anyway, um, in it, going here to my new template project, the shield and equip OMW scripts, we see a very, I'm gonna zoom in a ton here and scroll down, and we see a very basic thing going on here, and that's just this path which is local to what the data path is gonna be. So let's, whoa, 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 what do you mean by that? Let's, let's slow down and look at that. So we've got our configuration here. And we got, if you've used OpenMW before, you're no stranger to data paths, it's how you install mods. And we're gonna add one for this project. Here we go. Just throw that in there. And so what we see, uh, let's do, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Don't try this at home. I'm going to do a horizontal split here. So what we see here, this script folder, is this path plus this path, right? And so indeed, when we open this up, we go to scripts, shield and equip, player.lua. So context, path to the stuff we want to do. And uh, as I mentioned before, this, you know, ships a functional mod it actually does stuff so let's go ahead and uh you know let's just see what i what did you do johnny let's see what i did scripts chill and crypt player that lure mm -hmm. and let's make sure we're loading the right file here mm. that's something i'm working on All right, uh, that's loaded. Good, good. Let's run the game. Okay, and so while that's loading up, let's actually take a look at the code here. Starting from the top, there's just a bunch of boilerplate, as it were, stuff you got to do to kind of get the code ready to run your code so you can talk to the engine, right? And that's what all this stuff is. Um, some more stuff here so you can build a settings menu and support multiple localities and things like that. And then I'm getting a little more specific. I'm loading the player type directly. Um, it's all described here. Don't worry about it too much if you're not familiar with coding. Don't worry about this too much either. And uh, this is where I think the interesting stuff really starts because this is where we get a mod configuration menu um, as it's known. And so let's just go into my game here and hit escape. And if you've used OpenMW Lua before, you know that the script menu is found under options, scripts. And uh, oh, whoa, whoa, it's not loaded here. Let's see what happened. Okay. There is a, oh, so there's an error in my template. Okay. Invalid context name. Hmm. Also, though, I do want to note that we're targeting 0 0.48, so I'm going to X that dev part out of here. And let's see if it loads this time. Nope. 
No, oh, in the contact. Plan. Okay, that's good. Uh, yeah, so we can't have a hyphen here. Okay, so that's a problem with my, um, little template thingy. We'll just go ahead and change that to this, and that should fix it. And we'll restart the engine. I don't know if a reload will reload a broken script. No, wait. It did it again. Did I not save? No, I didn't save, folks. Don't try this at home. Okay, we are saved. Let's go ahead and save everything to Git. If you're not aware of what Git is, don't worry too much about that right now. But it's effectively saving our work like a checkpoint. All right, now it's going to run, I promise. Let's go ahead and close uh, MCP. We don't need that. We need the real estate to read my errors. <laughs> All right, I think it loaded this time. Yippee. Now, as I was saying before everything blew up, This is the interesting, first, I think, interesting bit of code because this gives us the script settings menu. And the script setting menu, aka mod configuration menu, under options, scripts, and here we go. <laughs> so my locale thing is missing actually a locale. Oh, yeah, because the file is wrong. We'll fix that in a moment. But as you can see here, I've got a setting. Show messages is the option that I have. Um,. That's this down here. This is where we build up the uh, the options. And it's a checkbox renderer, yes, no. Um, and we'll use that below in the actual meat of the mod here. And you can see that right here. If player settings show messages, then it's gonna show the message. Otherwise, it's just for demonstration purposes showing you another message when you said you don't wanna dis uh, show the message. So anyways, let's just use the mod. Enough of this. Um, so what we do here is we have, going to the very bottom, we're taking our code and we're handing it off to the engine. Hey, Sophia, good morning. Welcome. Thank you for joining. So glad you're here. We're just, uh, we're writing OpenMW Lua Mod today. We're taking a MCP feature that I do not believe is yet implemented to OpenMW in any way. It's the um, two-handed weapon unequipped shield idea. Um, and I'm just starting with a template, mod template that I made that in theory can help people get set up with a cool pipeline for mods. So, so diving into my Lua code here though, um, we've got sending our code to the engine right here. Don't worry about this down there just yet. Uh, this is a more complicated subject uh, um, regarding mod interoperability. That's what interfaces are for primarily. Um, but right now we're just passing our code to the engine with an engine handler. And as you can see, we got on key press and on key release. And what we do here is we just, you know, when we press the H key, we do something. When we release the H key, we do something else. Nothing really crazy. Let's see. So yeah, press, release. Um, nothing too crazy. And then, as I said before, we got that setting here, which is not really showing a, a locale, which we can will be interesting to fix here in just a moment. I'll turn that off. And then we can see we take another code path when I press the button. Uh, actually, doesn't do anything. Hey, welcome, Gene Nounce. I'm glad you're here. Thank you for joining. Yeah, um, thank you for the feedback too. As I said at the start of the stream, it's not what I have now is not really feasible um, for for most users. You know, if you never use Git and stuff like that, but like the you know, and you and I actually have talked about this before. You know, something like that where somebody can be like, "Yo, give me something you know that that is complete." And and also the benefit of this pattern too. Um, is it gives you a zip file and you can just plop that into Nexus Mods or any other website, you know, um, fairly easily. So, ideally, they would have an API for us to uh, to publish. But here we are. So interestingly, my um, my other code path here is not working. So let's just go ahead and do a good old print here. And when you change your code while the engine is running. Uh, if you've never wrote OpenMW Lua before, you can just hit uh, the console here and you can type reload. I actually just type R-E-L-O and hit tab and that auto completes reload Lua. You hit enter. All Lua scripts are reloaded. And we can look right here. Boom. We see everything happening. Go back to my... Oh my gosh. Go back to my game. Let's hit H. There we go. <laughs> Not sure why that didn't happen before. Um... Yeah, for sure, right? Like, when I botched it before because uh, it, it failed to load because of the 
um, localization context. I'm not sure if it would have reloaded that, but I, maybe it would have. I don't know. I should break it and see. Let's go back up here. And let's get my terminal in there. And so, whoops. Note in the corner there. Um, it'll blow up now. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. And, uh, whoops. Back to my code. And reload it again. Hey, it actually did. Okay, so hey, I stand corrected. It's a pretty powerful, you know, if you botch loading the script at startup, you can fix it when the engine's running. Um, I'm sure there's some limitations, but hey, you know, yeah, definitely something to lean on, right? Rather than like, sure, I got a setup here that's pretty minimal with no mods, and it's rather painless to close OpenMW and restart it, but it's very much better to not have to, right? And just kind of, whoop, here we go. Um, so anyway, though, uh, before we actually go into implementing the shield and equip thing, let's take a look at this stuff here. And so you might have noted the odd thing going on there. And so this is basically uh, the brokenness of the localization feature, which is allows you to display text in various languages, basically, uh, based on the user's preference. And that's under preferences. Uh, da -da. No. Language. Dirt. Here we go. And you can set, right, like your primary language. OpenMW ships with quite a bit of localized content already, and so that's what you're seeing here. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So anyways, this is how we, uh, this is how we support that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you're talking about the kind of the testing thing that I'm using here, right? So I can just kind of jump right into the game, skip character generation, and just boom, bam. Um, obviously it has limitations, but yeah, this is like super useful. Got my cheat character here, ready for action, flying around. Everybody's disabled. Um, key, very key and nice to have, but yeah, again, not without some caveats because the, because character generation doesn't happen, scripts that run after character generation then don't run. And so some things are weird in the game world, such as players being there and whatnot. We had a cool discussion about that on discord recently. Somebody noted, uh, NPC and Sadrith, uh, Sadrith Moro was there, so good times. Okay, uh, so again, here we are. We got our, our mod works. My noise is printing there. Uh, but we've got brokenness here basically everywhere. I'm like, yikes. Wow. Um, so let's fix that. What's going on with that is we have, whoops, uh, Lua mods can and should have a L10 and folder. Uh, and this has to, this fo uh, with a folder within it that matches what we're naming the localization context. So again, that's this right here, mod ID. When I use that, we're, we're loading the localization context with my mod ID here. So we'll just make that shield underscore unequipped and thusly let's fix that there. And so I'll open up what's in there now. And here we go. So now we actually have stuff. Okay. Uh, I should have kept the engine open. Yeah, no, it's, you know, hey, I don't blame you for not speaking a dozen languages. Okay. However, I happen to be fortunate enough to be able to lean on uh, folks from all over the world uh, that can help me with localizations, you know. And so I try to have as much coverage as I can, but also... I just don't want to like be like, oh yeah, let's take whatever and then have some localization I don't understand that means absolutely nothing like it should, you know. So I digress, though. Um, I'm grateful to all of my localization contributor friends. All right. So will it blend? Sort of. We, um, we Name is borked. I'm not sure what's going on with that Got name right here. Mm, okay, yeah, I think this might be uh, some kind of a pattern from either just a straight-up wrong pattern I was using or maybe a pattern from the early days of the UI API. Nonetheless, I think deleting that will resolve it. Let's go ahead and do the trusty... We'll have to back out of the menu. Reload Lua. Boom! There we go. And uh, so something to note, actually... Um, I think this is redundant too. But in the context of registering a setting settings page, you don't actually have to use uh, 
the localization renderer helper. Whoa, what are you talking about, Johnny? Localization renderer help helper. So going up here, what we have is this thing. Um, in the OpenMW Lua API, you can get a function from the engine that lets you give it strings that when you use it, it will grab the right localization. So if the user says, you know, I want Deutsch as my language, it's gonna show it in Deutsch, so forth. In this context though, you don't have to use that. It automatically gets parsed by the settings uh, interface in a localized context. So, um, and I believe, going back to my thing here now, yeah, see the description, it's auto localized. So I'll change that in my template too. But yeah, you can just pass it strings of localization keys. This is a string. This is a localization key. Hey, Herdrax, <laughs> welcome my friend. Good day, I'm glad you're here. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're just uh, making that Lua mod like we chatted about before. Um, and yeah, just going over making the settings menu uh, from my template. And so um, just for the sake of completeness, we'll do uh, shield, honey quipper. Ooh, we're inching towards a real name, exciting. Little Mancy, yeah, there you go. I'm done with that. Although I'm not on the level of some of the other, you know, extreme wizards out there. Talking about, you know, Zack and others. Frankly, Sector. By the way, what, there's a certain combat mod I'm waiting on. I haven't bugged you about in a minute. Shield on Equipper. See that? I didn't even have to restart the engine to change the string here. It actually reloads that even too. So cool, cool. Very cool. Um, so that's kind of like a high level look at like uh, just the basics of a Lua mod. Ooh, wait, we have another, we're committing another error here. Um, mm -hmm, looks good, okay. Uh, let's go ahead and remove our, yeah, we don't really need that there either. Clean it up. Somebody's gotta play it. Oh my God, I'll put it on the website. I mean, are you in like a beta or alpha state? All right, we'll 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 talk more about this, but yeah, we gotta get this thing out there. Turn for the record, if you are not familiar with what we're talking about, it's a Lua mod that makes OpenMW use turn-based combat for Morrowind, which is uh, actually a fascinating concept if you think about it. Oh, I will hit you up, sir. Yeah, we'll do it. Okay, fix that. Let's reload it again. Hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, all right, look at that. So just in a few easy steps, and I'll fix my template so this actually works as expected out of the box. Just had some errors in my in my base code. But we got this Lua mod that works and does really nothing useful, but it's a, it's a sample of how you write some code, which is what we're doing here. Don't pay too much about, too much attention to uh, what's going on specifically, but writing some code, and then we're handing it off to the engine here. Um, you don't necessarily have to do this in every Lua mod, necessarily. But generally speaking, um, if you want to interact with the player or something like that, um, like to unequip something, like what we're trying to do, we're going to need to deal with an engine handler. Yeah, okay, thank you for noticing that, Gonzo. So, uh, yeah, Gonzo noticed here in my template repo, we've got a link to... it. Says, so, uh... This is the thing that we kind of copy that code from. And in the readme, it says a template for building OpenMW mods. Right now, just Lua. Designed to be used as a base for new projects to quickly get going with. Made to be used with this modder's guide. And then if you click this, you're going to be disappointed because... <laughs> um, and unfortunately, due to something I don't really want to get into, a Python update happened. And several of my bad patterns that I'm using with the website have been exposed. And so the website doesn't currently run on my laptop at the moment. Otherwise, I would show you what's supposed to go here. But it's effectively how to use this pattern. Um, but I ultimately decided describing how to use a shell script and stuff was <laughs> too much. So, you know, we'll wait. We'll wait until we have something a little more user friendly until we put something here. I don't know. I'm open to suggestions, but thank you for noticing that, Gonzo. And yeah, as you can see, we got plans to do something here. Um, someday. The 2090 list, as we'd be calling it, which is a cute thing, I know. Okay, so going back down to here, um, before we dive into redoing all this code and reading what the player says, just a quick note about interfaces. And let's go back to the documentation here. And let's see if we got equip, yeah, script interfaces. And so at a very high level, um, 
An interface is where you can put some code that because OpenMW Lewis scripts are isolated from one another, and they, you cannot just like access things on somebody else's code directly. They have to, you know, expose it in this way or a few others, like via settings values, for example. Um, an interface though would be if I had like, for example, a leveling mod where I can like have like a, this isn't possible yet, but let's say I had like a gain XP function that decides, you know, okay, the player is gaining XP and this is what I do to give them XP. You could have it behind an interface so that somebody else who makes a mod or maybe wants to make a mod of the mod, right? Like an add-on for the leveling mod. And they could call, the, the base leveling mod could write it, the code behind an interface and then the patch mod could say, all right, here's the, here's the interface and they could overwrite it or they could call it and then do something after or before. Um, it's really a, a neat pattern for interoperating with mods. Or even if you just want to know, hey, is this mod loaded even? It's as simple as saying, you know, uh, you know, if I cool some cool mod that isn't me, then, you know, boom. And, and that's all you have to do, really, um, provided some cool mod that isn't me has actually done this and, and defined an interface. So even if you aren't, like, exposing code, um, for people to hack into. It could be useful to define an interface um, if perhaps users would want to detect if you're there to begin with, you know. Um, and they could still do that from other through other means uh, in 0 0.49. But anyways, we're not going to have an interface for this, I don't think, but I'm going to leave that there for now. But as you can see, I made the interface, which is, you know, it's kind of a bad interface example because it just does nothing, um, you know. Um, but yeah, it just prints to the, to the screen, um, a message with the player name. Not really useful to expose to people. Gonna keep it there until we, uh, you know, we have more of a, a complete mod. So, anyways, we're not gonna use these engine handlers though. Um, so, taking a step back, engine handler. Whoa, what's going on here? Um, not, they're not directly events, but they more or less behave like events, right? Um, it's do stuff when a certain thing happens, right? Excuse me. In these cases, it's on key press. In this case, on key release. It's possible to create your own events. In fact, um, whenever something happens that you want to allow people to like notice in that kind of a way, right? I would argue an uh, interface is probably more appropriate most times than an event. But you certainly could have like a, you know, uh, on a you can make a mod that adds farting, for example, and you could say uh, on farted and have a farting event, you know, to get a little bit sophomoric here. Um, but in any case, yeah, we talk about, uh, in the documentation here, they talk about engine handlers and they're very high level, hence the name engine handlers, right? <clears throat> You're directly talking to the engine and not really like parts of the Morrowindy code. And that's why they're not really like events exactly. So, um, being high level, it's stuff like on save, on load, on update, uh, which is like right now, not now and not now. And not now, but now. And that's when the game is active. Um, similarly, you have on-frame, which is all the time, including when the menus are up. And on-frame is actually what we're going to probably tap into here for our shield mod. So without further ado, let's dive into that. Mm, yeah, okay. I'm going to leave this code here for now, and we'll, you know, cut it out when we get serious. Um, and I'm not really sure what if any settings we'll need to expose to the user you know we could maybe have like a a disable option so somebody could have the mod loaded but maybe disable it eh, it would be almost trivial to to provide that but in any case so let's do on frame and for now we're just going to do it in line i don't like the space in between the parentheses even though lsp thinks i need it all right um, so, I had the idea to look at a mod that I already wrote to determine how to do this, but maybe it's more fun to just kind of do it blind. So, let's look at how we see what the player has equipped. Because uh, at a high level, what we want to do is see what the player has equipped. If it's two-handed... So that would be like, you know, uh, two-handed sword, 
staff, maybe, yeah. Um, Bo, Ross, Bo, I would argue as well. I'm not sure exactly what the MCP thing does. It might be neat to load that up uh, and do more research. We'll just note that for later. We're not going to be 100% accurate right now. We can get there. Maybe we can have an option for strict MCP mode, right? Where we're doing it exactly how MCP does it. If I don't end up doing it that way to begin with. Not really my intention. But I do I do feel like, to start out, let's just do two-handed sword. If somebody equips a two-handed sword, and I think my cheater player actually has one of those. Yeah, here we go. Steel Claymore. We don't have a shield, though. Hmm. Okay, so. Let us go. UESP Morrowind Light. Uh, wait, no, am I, am I derping it? Yeah, we got a shield. We got a glass tower shield. There we go. Boom. All right. Never mind. Okay. Back to here. Uh, player. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's not actually what we really want. We want the game object. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. There we go. I think. We may very well open up Smart Ammo just to see what I'm doing there as a reference. But Smart Ammo effectively does the same thing. On every frame, we're looking at uh, what you have equipped and when you have a bow. And if you're doing something else, we'll adjust the, um, the ammo. Mm -hmm. This is why we need the Lua documents that we talked about yesterday, Gonzo and Herdrex, if you recall. We were discussing a how to create a Luamod guide for humans is needed, because uh, it's a little hard to parse these documents, even for me. And I've looked at this a ton. And even used the equip functions many times, and I can't find them right now. Let's just do this. Uh, by the way, this is how you would uh, use an event that you made yourself. I'm not going to get into the details there, but yeah, you can you can clear just clearly just make arbitrary events. That doesn't stop somebody from making like a, an event framework. I think Zach has something kind of like that actually. Um, in time, we'll see more of that in the engine once things stable out a bit. All right, let's look at smart ammo because I'm just a dummy right now. All right, ammo scripts. All right. Laxonian, welcome. Thank you for joining. Cool. Thank you for the feedback. I'm glad you agree. Yeah, so that's what I'm trying to do here. Um, <laughs> I obviously, you know, am doing this kind of impromptu, so there's a few issues. But, uh, yeah, again, thank you for joining, and that's what we're doing. So let's take a look at here. All right. There we go. Yeah, I knew there was something. Equipment. Player. Something on the player type. Equipment. So let's, now we know where to look in the docs. I clicked myself away. Equipment. -a. Actor, yeah, okay, because it's not specific to the player. Many actors can have equipment, right? NPCs, so forth. Ah, thank you, thank you, Genounce. So Genounce is, you know, I would say Luomancer level. Um, also working on some mod manager software that we'll go over in this stream eventually, at some point. So yeah, just uh, feel free to put a link into the chat, by the way, if you want people to try it out. Uh, very exciting stuff. Alternative to MO2 that would directly support OpenMW. So, yeah, please plug it away. All right. Uh, actor. So, we've got a, quite a few things here. Um, right now, we just need to get the equipment. <laughs> no doubt. All right. So, two overloads. Okay. So, meaning it does different things based on the number of arguments you get it. So actually, we want to use the slot, and uh, Genounce basically gave us the correct code here. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Mo Mods. Excellent. Let's just open that up real quick. Thank you so much for sharing and for working on this. You know, you're doing what, what we need. You're the hero that we need. Looks great. 
YouTube demonstration. Let's just take a quick diversion here, shall we? Hmm? <laughs> okay, okay, cool, cool, yeah. Go ahead and give him a subscribe too. I'm not logged in. Cool. That that search is pretty neat. I gotta say. And this is QT, right? Cute, I think is how you're supposed to say it. Cute. Um, so, I mean, in theory, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. No, we're going to do a demo on here. We will, uh, cute, cool. We're going to do a demo on here eventually, but this is a, this is enough, I think, to kind of show the basics, right? Like, handles all the things that maybe you don't want to deal with when you're installing mods, right? And, and doing everything right, um, because you're aware of OpenMW and all that stuff. Really nice. Really nice. Let's just skip forward a little bit to, uh, what? Configs here. We're looking at config there. Very nice. Thank you so much. Mo Mods by Genounce. As a quick diversion there. Okay. So what do I have? I got a bunch of I have a bunch of stuff going on here. Weapon slot. What did I even? Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> totally love this project though. Um, again, we need more stuff like it. All right, let's put smart ammo side by side. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's not surprising. Momo is a character from Xenosaga also, and probably lots of other things. Um, the Simpsons already did it. Mm, you know what I'm saying? Okay, weapon slot. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and a dumpling. Cool. <laughs> that makes me hungry. Mm. All right, so player equipment slot carried right. Let's look at the docs here and what we're doing. Equipment slot. So you got a, a few things going on here. Uh, carried left, carried right. Ooh, non nif static static objects into OMW. That's an excellent question. Thank you for bringing that up. And I'm actually not really an authority on that, but I think uh, ooh. Cool, okay. Maybe sector, uh, section eight, maybe you can comment on that or some of the more uh, visually inclined folks that are around here. Um, I know you can uh, lo directly load Collada files into OpenMW. Uh, as for how to get like shiny stuff from Blender into that or into a NIF format, I'm not really sure though. Um, but yeah, great question and very exciting project for sure. All right, well, so what we're going to do is I'm going to take, I'm just going to copy this code, and we're going to, on every frame, we're going to do some, we're going to be nasty here, and just see what that gives me, because it's been a minute, I don't really remember. Okay, and let's get the console open here and get ready. Okay. Nice. So we're looking at uh, what's in the weapon slot every frame. 16. I forget what exactly 16 is. So let's go back to my smart ammo code. Mm. Okay, yeah. So those are just, I think, we're not supposed to really care or know about the value of that. Um, but we have a, so we have a weapon type. Let's go back to the documents. Yes, okay. And so, I believe this is what we want. No, no, that's not exactly what we want. We want, I think we want to get the base type which we can then say, is it? Hmm? 
is it one of the things we care about? Yeah. Right. Good call. Yeah, base type is item. As it says right here, thank you, weapon type. Thank you, Genounce. Pair programming is fun. Yeah, and then we'll get something resembling like what you showed, right? Um, all right, cool, cool. So, in smart ammo, let's zoom out a little bit so I can actually read this. Hey, small. <laughs> We're just coding it up, trying to. Uh, okay, okay, quit. Right. I'm just going to straight up copy this pattern. So, even though it might seem like... <clears throat> We're implicit operating on us, right? Like by us, I mean like the this us, this us right here. You may be thinking, well, well, Johnny, geez, it's implied that we're talking about the player here. Why do we need the self part? Um, and it's because eventually if there's multiplayer, there will be multiple players. So we need to say what player it is and self in this context going back to the omw scripts is the player if there's multiple players it's each of them individually that's why we have to do this if that looks weird to you it's understandable okay so equipped and the slot we want okay is uh print let's do equipped Weapon slot. I'm going to go ahead and, before we spam ourselves to death, let's just see what this gives us. The spam continues on. Okay, so we have nothing equipped right now, and that's accurate, right? Whoop. Hit the right button for Todd's sake. All right. Let's get our spam back. Let's get Steel Claymore. We have the shield equipped. It's just incidental for now. Boom. Great. So what that means is right here in our code, this thingy right here, I'm not going to worry about having the most perfect variable name. That's our equipped weapon, though. And as you can see right here in our terminal output, it's a we actually a weapon type. And we're going to check that this way. Whoop. Yeah, yeah, that would be awesome. You should do that. Or if Zach Utils doesn't do that already, it should. And we will have a Zach Utils stream eventually once I actually am able to, you know, leverage that myself. Okay. And yeah, so we still have the, we still have the shield equipped. All right. That's of note. Back to the code. All right. I'm a big fan of readability. Maybe I got some redundant variable assignments here, but it helps to be like, okay, this is equipped, and this is the equipped weapon, and blah, 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 for my old man eyes. Okay. So now we have the equipped weapon. Um, we're going to need to do... I think I'm going to do what I do in smart ammo, and I'm going to actually assign top-level variables to the specific types that we care about, right? Which would be axe two-hand, blunt two-wide, long blade two-hand, and probably these two marksmen. Correct me if I'm wrong. Thank you for the sanity check. Okay, so let's do that. Um, we're going to... You know, Getting a little cluttered here. So we got X2 
two-handed. Two-hand. I'm gonna copy the naming convention of the en of the engine just for consistency. And so now we can do something like. Oh wait. We need to do, we actually need to load the weapon type. Since I'm not just assigning, you could do like a require open MW types, assign it to something like types, and then we could do types period weapon, um, types period player, and whatever else. But I like to assign explicitly. Oh yeah, sure, <laughs> no problem, small. A little bit of the home IT service, please excuse me. <laughs> You're welcome. Alright, so we got X two hand. We care about that. What else do we care about? Blunt to close. Blunt to Y. And so I'll, what I'll end up doing is I'll probably make like some kind of a like a map like this so I can check to see if like what they have equipped is something we care about. For now we're just going to go. I'm going to only test for uh, long blade two handed because that's what I got. But eventually when we clean up the code, you know, we'll make it we'll make it better rather than having ifs and all that. You don't need that. Okay, uh, bow. Mark, man, bow. Hey, look at this. Simplest, check is on the list. Yeah, exactly. Something like that. Bow, crossbow. Whoa! <laughs> Something just happened. Wow. This LSP mode for Emacs, or the Lua server at least, is a little... I'm not sure what happened there. <laughs> yeah, hey. I well, Honestly, it's great. Uh, thank you. <laughs> it's good pair programming, rubber duck debugging, kind of, you know... Um, we're just hacking away here. So actually, I'll note, thanks to my handy-dandy language server, I know we're not actually using this anymore. So I'm going to comment that out. We'll probably delete it eventually. Less is more, right? Because uh, I don't think we're going to print anything out. We have no need for localizing anything, really. Okay. Um... So I love that. That's a terrible name. We're going with it for now. Whoa. Two hand. For just for now, we're going to do a long blade. Because that's, again, that's what I have. Okay. And let's look back at the documentation here. And type is just a thing on the thing, so we should be able to say equipped weapon type. And I think that's going to give us, because this is a enum, it's going to give us like a number or something that we can't um, do anything with. But we should be able to slice it, I think, out of our, our thing we got here, relevant types. Let's put that closer to my code.
Okay, so we should be getting a type here, which again should be just some number that doesn't mean anything to us because it's an enum. Okay, or not. I think my code is wrong. Uh, because if we s stop the scrolling, we look before I was getting a weapon. Oh, oh, right. We need the record. We need the record. Um, so this gives us the weapon record, and the weapon record is what has the type field, which is, in fact, exposed as lowercase. Will it lend? Haha! <laughs> Excellent. How do we know what two that two is what we want? Excellent question. We'll do something like um, what is this? What are the names I gave this thing here? Okay. Long blade two hand. Name. Oh, okay. Hmm. Let's just do this real quick. Because I already typed it. Ta -da. So if I do, oh my, where'd my mouse go? There we go. So if I do a one-handed, now it is false. Ooh, we're getting somewhere. All right, it's not quite the beautiful code that we want. Though. So, so now at this point though, if we have something resembling, uh, ooh, okay, how about this? Humor me here. not one we care about that's what we expect but now we should get something that's not nil there weapon record name okay let's let's print out what you know it's just called out print weapon record name. and before we actually look at that in the docs let's just see what that gives us boom cool human readable name No, that's it. Thank you. Um, and so, yeah, we can see right here. Boom. Okay, so... I think... So we can't... Uh, this syntax is not... It's syntax sugar that doesn't actually work with Lua. So what we want to do is similar to what we're doing... Okay, yeah. So actually, it would work if we were actually doing an actual map. should give us true. Oh, oh, because it's not the actual type. It's the string of the type, I think, maybe. Let's put the dock here. Should be the thing that we need. Yeah, the enum number. Okay, let's go back to printing that out. You know how we do. There is a type. Wait, what do I have? Okay, I have the Claymore equipped still.
Okay, okay, we're getting somewhere. It's the right type. Mm, yeah, this pattern is no good. Right, yeah, that's what I was just saying. I think maybe my little map pattern here is no good. It's not actually doing what I think. Oh, and, hold up. I think that's also a Lua-ism that I forgot. There we go, now it's true. There we go. Yeah, yeah, right, I just forgot. You have to put the, so if the key is, uh, you have to put the key in, in brackets uh, for syntax reasons, TLDR. There we go, all right. Good, well, what is it? look like with more stuff. Huh? Uh, X two hand, for example. Oh, jeez, come on. And so on and so forth. Okay. So, then we can just do something like this. stuff we want to do and we'll get we'll do the action there now let's just go ahead and clean up some of the well I'll keep that there actually this is my my notes right so this is the entry point to the functionality of our mod right if the player has equipped some type that is relevant to the focus of the mod do stuff let's and the stuff we want to do is we want to unequip a shield if a shield is equipped how do we do that? Let's go in here and let's get, let's get it on. Okay, so weapon slot, but we need actually, no more smart ammo, I don't need you anymore. You've been great. I'm gonna put the shield type up here as a, if it is one of those. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, it would be, um, hmm, how do they, I would guess maybe carried right? Um, yeah, I was thinking about that, Gonzo. Thank you. That's a good call out. <coughs> Excuse me. We do want to do that. Carry, thank you, Gene Outs. I think we do want to do that. That will be a stretch goal. <clears throat> Excuse me, or a, a post 1.0 feature. Um, I don't know if the, again, this is where more research is needed because if the MCP version does it, definitely want to do it. Um, if not, stretch goal. Uh, maybe if I'm not lazy, we'll fire up the vanilla executable and we'll try it, but uh, my, my laptop is too potato-like. All right, so anyway, we're just going to get carried right. Thank you, Gnats. Much appreciated. So we need, uh, so weapon slot again is carried right. We're gonna go with uh, local shield slot, even though that's uh, kind of a bad, arguably a bad name. It's good enough. Um, so that means my weapon slot. Interesting. So taking a step back, if that's right, then the code I already have, come on now, comment it out, friend. There you go. Ooh. The code I already have should show something when I have just the shield equipped. Handing this backwards. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> Let's just proceed with shield slot being left at this point. And let's do a local. Whoa. Okay, and we got our equipped result again, which comes from uh, the engine right here. We're making a call to the engine. Uh, hey, GamerRed25, welcome. Thank you for joining. We're just uh, hacking on an OpenMW Lua mod right now. Uh, we're going to try to unequip a shield when you equip a two-handed sword, because why should you have armor rating from a shield when you can't actually use it? Welcome, though. I'm glad you're here. All right, so we want equipped uh, shield slot. Yeah, okay. Print, equip, shield. Good, good. Um, get rid of that. Don't know why I duplicated that. 
Started to learn Python yesterday. Awesome. Welcome. Yeah. So normally during the stream, we we do Python coding, actually, because our website, modding-openmw.com, is written with Python in the back end. So awesome. Congratulations on beginning your journey in learning Python. And uh, yeah, I hope you have fun. Definitely remember to have fun and also just learn. Heck yeah. Agreed. Python is great. Um, I learned to program on Python. Actually, this website is like one of my biggest, first biggest projects that I ever did in Python. So, yeah, anyways, enjoy. All right, I feel like we're really close. Ooh, Lisp, yeah. <laughs> oh, Sector, don't worry about it, man. Um, Lisp is one of the first languages I was exposed to, like, in a professional setting, working in a Lisp shop here in Chicago, and uh, it's interesting. <laughs> first language was Visual Basic. Me too, frankly. I, I had a Visual Basic class in high school. I barely remember it. I was mostly interested in the CD player on the PC so I could listen to music during class. That dates me, by the way, so you know how old I am. Basically, I was listening to music on CDs. <laughs> Lisp is, uh, well, my friend, when, you when you're ready to level up your Emacs config, there will be minimal amounts of Lisp involved in that. So anyways, we're really close here. We're very close to having what we need. All right. So, so, Let's update our reality here. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Oh, cool. That's still really cool, though. I mean, queer, playing with APIs and stuff is, like, more than beginner-level stuff. So that's awesome. Very cool. Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, uh, game-oriented comes from Naughty Dog. Game-oriented Lisp, uh, as I recall correctly. They are Lisp legends over there, if you didn't know. What's his name? Andy Gavin? Lisp legend. Just that one, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you could read his blog for some amazing stories about making Crash Bandicoot, for example. If you're into game dev, kind of uh, under the hood peaks, his blogs about like how they broke the PlayStation hardware. They made Sony worried about Crash Bandicoot because it did so many CD reads. Oh, cool. Okay, Quake C. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, I mean, id software, Carmack code in general, right? Is like, you know, it's a stand. It's a standard. Carmack's reverse. I remember a story specifically about how, yeah, there was like a memory card error that was like a bug in the PlayStation hardware. Gary's mod, nice, cool. That's really cool. Gary's mod does Lua too, doesn't it? Um, that's awesome. We're getting off. We're getting distracted here, but it's good. So anyways, going back to my spam. So if I unequip the shield. No. Equip it. Stomp it. Unequip it. No. We see what's going on here. Yeah, Lua, nice. Ooh, nice Jack engine. Ooh, you know, I started playing. I never actually played the Jack and Daxter games. Loaded it up on my Steam Deck with the PlayStation 2 emulator. And man, like... They look good for their age, you know? Like, for just PS2 games, a Jack and Dexter 1 PS2 launch game looks pretty good. Cool, very cool. Gary's Mod, that takes me back. It's one of my first exposures to game modding, actually. It was a friend of mine. We played Gary's Mod on a LAN at his house, and he had, like, a swing powered by a rocket or something, and I was just blown away by the expressivity of it all. Uh, man, we're going off the deep end here. Ooh, really? Wow, Sector, we get, wow. We gotta talk about this off stream, wow. And maybe even have a stream, Jack and Daxter stream. That would be so cool. Native Jack and Daxter. All right, you know what? I actually have to have a WC break. So talk amongst yourselves about Lisp. Watch my uh, screen here and I will be right back.
<laughs> Actually, okay. Um, Semi-related to what Genounce just said. I have to share a crazy idea I had that I've only shared with Gonzo and Herdrex so far. And I think it's doable in 0 0.49 OpenMW. And I would love to do this mod myself, but if somebody else beats me to it, please, for the love of Todd, do. I thought we could implement Katamari Damashi in OpenMW Lua. And by that, I mean rolling a big ball around and rolling up all the stuff into a big ball of stuff and doing it. If you're not familiar with Katamari Damasi, totally is doable in 0 0.49, I'm pretty sure. Zach Utils is like proof. But yeah, you could do, you could like, right? Like starting out in Satanine with like a little, like, I don't know, the Heart of Lorcan, right? And just like Katamari up everything. And it makes no sense, but it needs to be done. So, okay, I had to get off that, that off my chest. I would totally love to do that idea myself, but I by no means lay claim to it. I know, right? I know, right? It's the dumbest thing that nobody in their right mind wants, but at the same time, why not? You know, and, and it would also be kind of a cool demonstration of OpenMW Lua, I feel like. Yeah, right? Katamari Damashi, yes, it happened. Okay, back on target. We're not doing that today. Oh, uh, physics. Well, so, but we can, so, okay, to go a little bit down that rabbit hole, um... I thought we could do like ray casts, maybe. But obviously, like a physics collision detection is exactly what we need. Um, and then, right, yeah, so we would need like a, maybe some mods that put more clutter around, right? Because I'm not sure. So in Katamari, you have a progression, right? You can only start out picking up uh, small things and it might be a little awkward, right? Picking up planters and you'd have to roll from town to town and the progression would be a little awkward. Some rebalancing would be needed, like Vanilla Morrowind itself, even. <laughs> okay, back to what we were doing here, though. Um, anyway, just throwing that out there. Lore Katamari. Oh, I love it. That's the name. That's it. <laughs> oh, gosh. Wow. All right. I'm glad I shared that with y'all. I hope somebody does it. So. Um. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, right. There would be no going interior with your Katamari. I don't. That <laughs> wouldn't really work. Ball of mud crabs. Yeah, exactly. Right. We could be like a, you know, 10% of your Katamari. We're cliff racers. <laughs> that kind of a thing. <laughs> uh, if you've never played the game, at the end of a level, they tell you kind of like a breakdown of like your top three objects, you know, um, and it can be kind of silly. Okay. So we, what we have taken, going back into our code now, finally. What we have here is the basic workings of knowing when we have a shield equipped and a two-handed weapon. Because, uh, woohoo! Oh, and we found a bug, too. Look at this. Little jube. Yeah, right? Like, it's my favorite dance move, by the way, that I came up with is push the Katamari. Okay. Enough of that. Ooh, boots for beasts. <sighs> No, I don't think so, because we would have to affect, like, the models that are used, I think, in a way that we can't do that. I don't use line numbers. Oh, yes, I do. If you look right here, there's my line number information. Um, I used to have line numbers on the side there, probably is what you're used to expecting. Um, but, yeah, I mean, just out of the box, Emacs gives you this right here. This is the mode line. Um, and yeah, it just was cluttering. I like to give code the focus of my thing, right? Like some of my coworkers will use VS code and there's like so much going on tabs and bars and all this stuff. I don't want any of that. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. It's very tiny. Admittedly, this is like a 1440p display. So yeah, yeah. You know, um, just keep the information there. And if I need it, I can glance down, but, uh, um, Relative line numbers are cool. Yeah, there's something. Emacs has something that could show you that, too. I also can do uh, Control-C-L. And uh, no, 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 no. That's not what I have. Control-C, Control-L. Huh, okay, well, it looks like Lua mode overwrites my Control-C-L binding. But that was a uh, go to line. You can do, yeah, MGG is the... And you can go to line 100, boom. Um, and so I, I lean on that a lot, too, if I like, need to zap to a particular line, right? Because um, you could do something like, oh, uh, whoa, we have to fix this bug. 
That's right. I kind of got distracted. So line 106. What is that? What are we doing that's violating the... Oh, yeah, okay. So what we need to do here is we need to say if there's even a weapon equipped. We need to guard ourselves from that. Vimy, yeah. <laughs> Vim is another text kind of driven editor that's old and popular. Uh, so we need to say if... We need to guard ourselves from trying to read the equipped weapon when there's no weapon equipped. That's what's going on here. If you're not familiar with coding and the types of explosions that you can trigger. It's not really obvious from this error. Sol, no matching function call takes this number of arguments and the specified types. You got that? <laughs> However, this is not my first rodeo. And I happen to have a pretty good hunch... That, yeah, we just need to put all this inside of a of a if. Uh, no more explosions. All right, look at that. So we got no sword equipped, but then when we do, boom, we're back to ah, uh, that's our condition. Okay. Now, for what we all came here for. Removing that shield when you shouldn't reasonably have it equipped, right? And again, props to MCP. Which, if you weren't here at the start of the stream... The whole point of this is to replicate the MCP option. Two-handed weapon. Remove shield. I even... wholly copy-pasted their description, and I'm going to use it in mine, I think. All right. So going back up to here and going back up to here, we want to say now, similarly to how we're saying if this, we can sort of here, if equipped shield. And you'll note, I try to write my code so that it can be like readable sort of in a human-like way, right? So if equipped shield, then unequip it, right? Well, how do we do that? Good question. I don't know off the top of my head. Gnounce, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned this to you specifically, but this is relevant to you. One of the um one of the whole reasons for kind of reviving the idea of a template for Lua mods and stuff is I was actually admiring the work of the MWSE project. I'm going to go ahead and pull this up here. As, I, as I'm like struggling to read our documents, wishing that I had something that made more sense, um, our friends in the MWSE project have a really nice document website. And I just, I saw this yesterday and it includes this development workflows page, which I think is nice. And also this creating a mod page. And OpenMW docs really lack this kind of a like intimate look at the process, you know, um, and so what we're doing here, yeah, it's so good, right? It's really nice. It's like, hey, this is what you do, right? And we're really lacking that. And so what we're doing today kind of is like a preview of, of something like that. We want to do something like that, right? Like, um, so yeah, here we go. Yeah, it's just really, it's, it's really hard to do this kind of a thing. Um, writing documentation that's nice and thoughtful like this. You know, it's it's hard. So props again to the MWSC project. This is like an inspiration for sure, and that's what we're going for. So bat now back to this. I'm gonna actor equipment, actor. Okay. So what we want to do here is, I believe, set nil. Right. It's only gonna make the engine blow up if we're if I'm wrong. So you know. Oh, you started it. Oh, okay. Right on. I mean, we should definitely link up about that off stream. You and I, we have similar goals here. <laughs> All right. Okay, nice. Yeah, have you talked to Zach, by the way? Because I'm almost positive Zach has something something like that. Um, you should definitely link up with Zach, though. Because we should all just, you know, combine our efforts. There should be, like, a modder's resource kind of a thing, right? Like... 
uh, like all this stuff that I'm doing just to see if something is equipped, you know, um, it would be nice to have a more of an abstraction. Right, exactly. So <laughs> that's why we got to pull him in on this. Um, I'm sure he's busy, though, with the Marathon at the moment. Yeah, totally, totally. So, and as I said before, in a future stream, we'll be looking at Zach Utils. Um Okay, well, let's do this, huh? Player. Yeah, right, exactly, exactly. I mean, Zach is a developer on the OpenMW project and a major contributor to the OpenMW Lua API, you know? Definitely makes sense to rally behind his efforts because he's just like the whiz behind it all, you know? All right, we're going to set equipment. And if we look here at the documents, so it says actor. Player is a descendant of actor. It Player is an actor. So this applies to us too. And we look at set equipment. And the actor would be, in this case, again, we're coming back to this self thing because self would be the thing that the script is attached to, the player, or in the future, many players. And the equipment is the slot. Right? Oh, no, 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 no. The equipment is, aha, okay, yeah, okay, I'm remembering now. So the equipment is everything. So we have to get everything. And then we have to set the shield to nothing. All right. Ah, it's coming back to me. Yes. New e New equip equals slot. There we go. Um. Or I just don't need to, okay. I can mutate the table in place. Cool. Equipped. Will it blend? Hmm? So when I reload, hold up, hold up, hold up. Give ourselves a little clue. We should just print that once. If we hit the jackpot here. All right, are you ready? Boom. Boom. There you go. No, I want it. Nope. Denied. <laughs> okay. Well, cool. Um, so that's the mod, right? Let's make sure that we can equip a shield. Otherwise, we're not, like, going too crazy here. Let's give our Elton brand an equip. Has an argument for slot. Huh. Yeah, right, right. So, yeah, that's the kind of thing um, as the API builds out, you know, that they can mature. And, I, and I, I'm with you. I would like to see more consistency in the API, right? I feel like get equipment and set equipment should be close. Um, we'll get there. Dude, you know it. That is it, right? Zach Utels is the TR data of OpenMW Lua for sure. Um, I feel like in my own code, I'm reinventing a lot of wheels that Zach Utils, like, again, you know, maybe Zach Utils has already thought of, you know, all of this. All right, well, so let's clean up our code. We're ready to release this mod almost, and it didn't take the entire stream even. Amazing. Okay. Wow. So this mod actually is happening. Can you believe it? Grab shit. Yeah, right. I'm a reference to or I've got Ashlander uh, Architect locally, and I'll grab through that, like, especially with creating stuff, right? Ashlander Architect does so much crazy stuff that, yeah, if you're if you're an experienced coder and you know how to look at other people's code and, and get knowledge from it, it's like, pff, it's like reading an Elder Scroll, you know, practically. Copy and paste my own stuff. Yeah, I do, too. Like I said, I have a, it definitely blends Gonzo. Like I said, I've got like a bunch of patterns that I cargo cult from pro project to project for better or for worse. Okay, so, you know, we don't, I want to do this uh, t pattern here, but we don't need the, the variable definitions. It's not useful. So let's go ahead and just, let's finish this out, huh? Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, agreed. Those are, that's a pattern I do too, G announce and uh, agreed sector. I love the just the the UI placement stuff. 
Yeah, yeah, agreed. UI API is cool. Erm said something as the uh, author of the UI API. He said something interesting in the Lua channel about implementing health bars in, in shaders. Which, yeah, it makes sense. It's doable, but it's an interesting idea. So we're just doing this boring work here of defining all the weapons we care about, right? And giving a true response when we get them. So we have an easy, performant way of, of finding out if the player has something equipped that we care about, right? Like, you could make some code that's, like, really, really terrible and, and cost frames and stuff. We're trying not to do that. We're trying to be efficient, minimal, good coding patterns, low runtime complexity. Okay, Genounce. So, note to self, Genounce is shader writing expert and is going to implement shader health bars in OpenMW. Gotcha. I can't believe we're actually. Oh, okay. I don't know. Yeah, I tried to dabble in shaders for Marksman's eye. I wanted like a radial blur for when you're zooming in the bow, but even that was too much for my caveman brain. I asked Erm for help because Erm is a pro shader writer, and he was just like, "Oh yeah, it's easy. You just do this." And I'm like, <laughs> "It never." And nonetheless, it never happened. Okay, we got all the types we care about. We don't need this anymore. And actually, for my sake, I like to, um, I don't like to do inline functions there. It's just a style thing that I do. So what we're going to do is, we don't need this, don't need this, don't need this, don't need that. We're not going to have an interface. I don't need that. We're not even going to have settings, really. I'm deleting it for now. We can nuke the events we're not using. Oh, Sector, I gotta show you my work in progress mod list called Just Good Morrowind. But the long and short of it is no uh, asset replaces, replacers whatsoever and just leaning completely on shaders. Uh, no asset replacers with the exception of Sophie's Blue Skies. Um, so we can have the volumetric cloud shaders. But shaders alone go such a long way in making the game look beautiful. And then when you pair them with normal maps for everything, get some normal maps for the vanilla textures. Yes, it's hideous, but it's also beautiful at the same time. It just works. All right. So let's uh, let's yank this out of here. And as a matter of style, I like to name my functions after the handler that they implement. You can name it whatever. You can name it I love Todd or Todd bless Todd or, you know, whatever. It's got to mention Fargoth or Todd, I feel like, if you're not doing my pattern, though. Okay, and if I have only one engine handler, I like to forego all the indents here and just put everything on one line. This is something I learned from my Lisp friends. Okay, well, so when we boil it down and just have removed everything except for the core functionality of the mods, we're left with 33 lines of code, which is less than I thought it was going to be, honestly. So let's go ahead and make sure what we have here now are, are cut down. Fair enough. Yeah, honestly. So I'm glad you mentioned that, Gino, because actually what I prefer is for some formatting tool to just decide it for me. And I don't have to care or think about indents and all that stuff, but I don't believe such a thing exists for Lua. Um, if it does, I will employ it in all my projects. Because that's one thing I like about Go. Uh, I write Go 2, and Go has the formatter. Oh, you hate formatting tools. Okay, well, the Python formatter, Black, annoys me because they change their opinions with releases. Um, and so I'm like constantly, my server runs an older Python than my laptop, you know, and it's constantly annoying me. All right. 
So um, just trying to sanity check the mod down, make sure it works. We don't have a settings menu. I don't think we really need one. Um, we're not tracking the shield that was equipped, which we need to. Let's put a note in here. Not exactly sure how that behavior would work, right? Um, but it's certainly doable. Um, we don't even have, really have a lot of code here, right? And you know, thirty some odd lines of code, and we're a little we're a little generous with spaces too here, right? Like I could co golf it up a little bit more. Hey, Shinino, welcome. Yeah, cool. Hey, uh, nice, awesome. Drop a link to your stream in here, please. Um, and I'm so glad you're here. Thanks for joining. We're just writing an open. Uh, we're writing an open MW Lua mod today. Um, just to recap for you, uh, Shinino is one of our friends from Discord and, and so on, and Shinino streams OpenMW. Just to recap, there's a Morrowind code patch. Thank you for the link. Awesome. Uh, there's a Morrowind code patch feature that unequips the shield when you got a two-handed weapon equipped so you don't get, like, the cheaty armor buff from it. And I thought that would be a perfect OpenMW Lua mod, and we could write it on the stream here today, and that's what we've done. You have arrived at the point when we've actually just completed the mod, so we're, we're reviewing it right now to make sure I didn't write garbage. <laughs> Uh, so, okay, what's our situation here? Glass tower shield, equipped. Long blade, one-handed, equipped. And what we have here, steel claymore, two-handed. We'll get back out of here. It should actually, uh, so I think despite the fact that we're doing it um, on the on-frame handler, the equipped stuff on the player won't update while the inventory is up, and that's why we have to close the inventory and reopen it, but you'll note, boom, tower shield unequipped, subsequent armor rating debuffed, and I can keep trying to equip it, and it just gets, boom, removed, so yay, okay, what about a bow, right? Boom, there we go, cool, it works, woohoo! So that's the mod, we're basically ready for release, there's just a few things we gotta do. I'm confident that it works Reasonably well. I'm confident enough to call it 1.0. Um, oh, yeah. We don't actually need the... We don't really... don't really need the localization thing, so I'm tempted to delete it, and I think I'm going to do that. That would be like, right, if we had some text to show the user, but, you know, this is a pretty featureless mod. Just do one thing and do it really, really well, and if we have a need... Like, maybe if we implement um, a feature that's not in the MCP equivalent, then we'll have a toggle for that. Make it off by default or something. Because our goal here is to mimic what they're doing in MCP. Oh, please. Okay. All right. So just to finish things off, we need to now... Um, yeah, it is relatively slow week. Uh, I believe the dynamic music mod is updating. So that's, that's exciting. Um, so what we want to do is now, before we... Are ready for prime time we want to make sure the website oh really bcm update okay i gotta check that nice um we'll make sure our website is presentable we're not gonna make it perfect we'll make sure it's presentable uh, okay so there's a few things i want to change um and i want to attach a gif but i don't know if i'm going to be able to record that <laughs> while i'm streaming so i'll have to do that probably after the stream this is the text from the MCP option. Um, this is okay because we actually don't have the repo created on GitLab yet. We don't have uh, a release push yet, but we're gonna change that shortly. Um, but one thing, so one thing I wanna do here is I wanna take this and actually make it the name of the human name of the mod. Just some, yeah, just some small things, right? Like, and I'll change this in my template script. Um, we got to change the mod ID for localization. And then, yeah, I want to make sure I sub in. Like, we should probably prompt the user. In 2090, we'll prompt the user for the name. And then we'll do the translating to the slug and the underscores and all that stuff, you know. Um, but for now, I'm just going to deal with it since I'm the only user of this Rube Goldberg machine system. All right, web templates. Using the Supo website generator by my good friend, Daniil Batorin. So, uh... Major props to him. We're going to say shield unequipper. And uh, we want to absolutely make sure that we mention that we're implementing MCP functionality. 
site. Whoops. Uh, web site index. Um, and let's. Uh, run that again and make sure we get the the name accurate here and be um two-handed weapon removes shield two-handed weapon removes shield so yeah we'll get a gif later and this we're gonna the template I'm gonna change this. Um, I actually would really love feedback from everybody about this, but the template's gonna have a little bit more than this because even in my own mods, I, I give more than this. Um, so without further ado, let's open a, another one up that I can copy paste from, right? We all love copy pasting from ourselves. All right, just, okay, maybe this is a not the best one to copy from, but I'm doing it. Okay. Just leave it as is. Let's reload the website. Let's close the MCP. My potato has a precious shortage of CPU cycles. Recrunch the website a lot faster for these. This is crunched out by a static website generator. So versus like the modding OpenMW website, the crunch is like instant, which is nice. Shield and equipper. All right, and a quick control R and we've got stuff here. All right, cool. Um, we can go ahead and erase this last one here. This is the majority, this applies to my MOMW gameplay mod. Cool. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Good call out, Genounce. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of room to um, de hard code things here and there and I've tried to do that for example with like the JavaScript that all the websites use and the Lua plugins the static site generator that I use has Lua plugin API and, and I have those in like their own repo but definitely like the we could do more for sure <laughs> 2090 list right uh, yes 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 replace that with shield and equipper yes 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 Uh, okay, so move, heal, equip. Yeah, um, hmm. I'm happy. I'm happy with that name, Shield on Equipper. Oh, huh? That file doesn't exist anymore. Silly me. But we have to come back here real quick and fix that. Cool. Yeah, actually, Shanino, I haven't gotten quite around to putting anything new on there, but there is quite a bit to come. Actually, I think in tomorrow's stream, um, what we'll do is we'll look at what's remaining there, which is mostly quest mods. And uh, Herdrax and Gonzo actually had a great idea to maybe kind of like divide up uh, who's testing what, right? Because there's like a couple dozen quest mods out there oh okay yeah you want to grab that for sure that's like another one so yeah, anyway just a quick preview of what we might be doing tomorrow we might be talking about how what our focus is for 6.0 and uh, to make sure that everything gets eyeballs on it but like it's not all on one person right like as much as we would love each to do a 400 hour playthrough and do everything um you know want to get things done a little bit quick all right does it still blend 
Oh, no, it will not blend. And I'll tell you why. Nice, awesome, cool, Gonzo. Working on an OpenMW Lua implementation of uh, Mantle of Ascension, by the way. Which I'm pretty excited about. Quipper. Okay, yeah, yeah, for sure. That's something, thank you, Shinino. That's a great call out. That's definitely, the normal maths for everything is gonna be one of the things that we wanna be really thoughtful and careful about. We do it accurately, but in a way that's like, doesn't make your head explode. Cause yeah, there's a lot going on there for sure. Okay, so does our mod still work? Eltariel. Yeah, nice, thank you. I really appreciate all that. Um, uh, the feedback about what you found, but also the feedback about, for example, the cut content mod. That's very thoughtful right up there. So really appreciate it. All right. We're in game. We got a shield equipped. We got a no weapon equipped. Uh, let's. We still got the shield. We still got it. Okay, good. What if we do that? Boom, shield off. All right. But what if we do this? Shield off. Boom. All right. Yeah, it still blends. Woohoo. We didn't break the mod by cleaning it up. Let's go real quick and make clean all. Let's clean everything up. Web, local web. Let's look at the website again. Okay, we still got to change the title. That's in the static site generator configuration. Web suppo.toml. Uh, suppo uses our, our favorite language, Toml. For configuration, which is what it's whatever, you know. We're gonna change shield unequipped to that needs to be in order for some of our, our website Lewis scripts to work, this needs to match the slug we're gonna have on GitLab. On that note, let's go ahead and create that, huh? So you would uh, get a GitLab account of your own and you would log into your account and you would make a project under your account. Um, we're gonna put this under the modding OpenMW group. We're gonna create a blank project. We're gonna call it Shield. Shield unequip. And by all means, feel free to use GitHub or um, what's the Gitty fork that's out there that people use. Feel free to just use whatever. Um, and, uh, you know, I use GitLab just because that's where OpenMW was, and also they've generously supported the project with an ultimate subscription, so thank you, GitLab people. Um, we're gonna put the name there. It automatically slugs out something we're gonna need to do eventually. It's public because... Why not? I don't care, GitLab. Thank you. Okay. Now, a little bit of plumbing here. We're gonna take our code that we have here, Oh, yeah, definitely agree with Herdrax, by the way. Poetry. <laughs> Pure poetry. Thank you so much. I just can't say enough. Thank you so much. All right, all right. I feel like we're almost ready to push this up there, huh? Just want to build the website real quick one more time and do a quick peek at everything. And uh, then I think we're ready to fly the paper airplane out the window, right? Uh, shield on equipper, is that even what the file is called? Whoa! Okay, yeah, there's an error. See, this is why we sanity check ourselves and then do it again. Whoop! Our packaging script is busted. And now it's, no, oh, still busted. Everything. Mm, wait, we already have it open. Cool. And so this is what the GitLab robots are going to produce that the end users can use. Change log, README, license, all that fun stuff, the actual plugin that you install, and then our code that we wrote today, which ends up being kind of a really puny amount of code, which is great. That's what you want, right? Less is more. Okay, so I'm happy with that. 
It's our pleasure. Thank you. And thank you, El Tariel, for your contribution. And uh, we really appreciate that. The thoughtfulness. We want to be as best we can be. Ye, uh, Chinino, yes. Uh, real quick, I'll show you what how I have it set up since you're here. After, after I take a quick look at this. Okay, this looks good. Looks good. Shield and equipper, and equipper, ba ba ba. Read me. Uh, we'll fix the read me in a second. Yeah, okay. All right, so taking a step back. This is my config, my uh, in progress config for just good Morrowind. But uh, so you can see what I've got here. These are the folder paths that I have for it. And so these are the Muse expansion mods that they mention in the description. Uh, when you ex extract them, these are the folders you get, right? And so you'll just point them to that, and then it looks something like... It looks something like... So this is the this is the dynamic music folder, right? Scripts, OMW scripts, and then the Muse... The Muse stuff just looks like this. Um, this would be the root, right? And they'd have a music folder. Yep, standard, yep, standard uh, OpenMW stuff. That's right. Okay, I think that was the last thing. So the CI is happy. Um, I think we're ready to wait. Hold on a minute. Let's see here. Let me just do one. Shield. Let me equip. What do I have written here? So I consider all of you that have been here joining this stream while it's live and anybody who watches it after to be a honorary author of Shield on Equipper. So thank you so much for your help. And uh, you're included in this, the license of the software. I like to use the MIT license because really life's too short. Just do whatever you want and have fun. Uh, so we're going to go ahead. I think we're going to, this is it. Ship it. Uh, oh, you know what? We'll commit, but I won't push if I can not fat finger my password. We'll commit, but not push. And I want to take a whoops. I'll take a look at the website. What's a change log look like here? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We do want to. We want to fix up this. Shield, honey, whipper. Burr. We're going to do a little bit of git foo here. Bear with me. fix up hunter 12 <laughs> I had to think for a minute I'm like wait what <laughs> uh, there's some password jokes that I'm just not going to get into right now oh yeah we don't have an upstream that's right I was trying to do that um, a while ago if you're not familiar with git we need to tell git where to put our code I'm going to do this right here just grab that we're gonna say git ring note and git lab blah and then back to my git client up here we're gonna push we're gonna set an upstream git lab master boom 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 and let's watch the magic happen will ci pass on the first run this is always the fun part all right let's open up the pipelines shall we so what's happening now is the git lab CI robots are running my script to build and package the mod. Ooh, it succeeded. And then it's going to publish the website. Ooh, I might have... Yeah, I don't have a link. We don't have a link at the readme yet. I'll fix that up after the stream. Um, but once this is done, we're going to have a website. So it builds the mod, and then it builds the website. Boom, it's done. Okay. So, without further ado, let's uh, get the link here. That's going to be shield on the equipper. Oh, geez. This is, a, this is a, okay. GitLab, I love you. You do silly things sometimes. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you. I'm glad you, I'm glad you think it's cool because I do too. All this stuff is just cool to me. So, okay, but real quick, we need to fix, we need to fix something in the settings. Um... And I forget what it was. Um, I 
it's a bit hard to... Yeah, exactly. There was some dynamic URL. Let me go back. Can I just search all settings? There's a... This URL is wrong. It's like <laughs> shield-unequipper-mounting. This is nonsense. What I want is something like... So maybe I have like an org le level default that is stupid and that's that's doing this to me. But yeah, so this is what we're trying to fix, folks. Yippee! We can find it on dynamic. Pages has moved. Deploy pages. All right, all right. Yeah, here we go. Use a unique domain. No. I mean, this is a unique domain anyways. This is unique. It is unique because of this. It is unique also because of this. Puzzling feature. GitLab recently made it a default, and I'm not a fan. If I could just type my own thing right. Okay, yeah. So, uh, web cache issue. Ta-da! And so you should be able to open this up. I'm going to paste this in the in the chat. You should be able to open this up. Um, the download button isn't going to work because I haven't published a release yet. But uh, since we're all here and we're finishing up the process, what I would do for that once I... Well, yeah, we're all here and it's the stream is still active. Let's do that. Let's, let's finish the process. But before we do that, I'm going to finish the readme. Because I want the readme to actually make sense, right? And so I'm gonna change, I'm gonna copy the content of one of my uh, thank you guys. I appreciate it. We're gonna not have the GIF for the first release just because I can't get that while I'm streaming. But um, I do want to do the release uh, here on the stream. So let's see here. Settings. I'm gonna do some more copy pasting of my own work. And what do I even have here? Yeah, that's good. I'm going to take all of this. And then delete most of it. Excuse me. All right, let's take a look at that. We'll recrunch the website. Should be looking good. I think that's a wrap. And so just to put a bow on everything here, we'll go ahead and just update some details. One, two, three, four, five. That's the same luggage as my luggage password. I just botched the quote. If you haven't seen Spaceballs, watch it. Okay. Back to the CI robots now. Pipelines. <laughs> yeah, that seems great. Okay, so when this is finished, yeah, cool. So this being green means it successfully produced the zip that you can download if you go to the URL that I posted uh, here in the chat. Let me just demonstrate right now for posterity. But the green check thing that you see there, oh, come on. Oh, come on. <laughs> come on, GitLab, you're killing me. All right, well, if you click this dev build button, I can't do it here because this isn't the right one. 
But if you go to that website and click the dev build button, you're going to get a zip, which is the mod. And that's produced by this green check mark here. Um, and so, yeah, boom, here we got the pages. We built the website. We deployed it. That's all updated now. Um, so how do we how do we actually get this button to work? How do we get it to say latest version? Um, this is a git thing called tagging. And so what we'll do is we'll git tag. We'll create a tag name 1.0. We'll put it on master. We'll push it away. Uh, you, I hit the wrong button. Close that. And so what we'll see here is yet another pipeline kicks off for the release. Did I actually push it? There we go. We're gonna have another pipeline right there, boom. And you'll note here, so this says master because this was triggered by a change to master. This was triggered by the tag. So we click on the pipeline. We can see we are building the zip again. And then this phase is different from the other pipelines. It's called upload. And uh, what this is doing is it's taking the zip we created previously and it is putting it into the GitLab package registry. So if we click over here, shield on equipper, package registry, shield on equipper. We got a, yay, we got a thing here. And then if the website were to load and you looked at it, Uh, if you have it open already, if you refresh it, you'll note that now that should work uh, and the download button would work. It's not working on my local one because, let's see. Right. Yeah, it's hitting, it's trying to hit. Hmm. Do I not have the, hmm, do I not have JavaScript? Mm, I do. Okay. This is the kind of lovely problem that we'll take care of off stream. But there you have it in a nutshell. Um, gameplay, shield, and equipper. And uh, we've gone from zero to functional um, OpenMW Lua mod in about two hours with a, quite a few diversions, some great conversation. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Uh, from here now, what we would do is we would go to the website and we would, um, let's see if it works for me now. Todd can hope. Um, but from here, we would download our zip that uh, the GitLab CI robots produced and we would go into Nexus mods and you would upload it there. And that unfortunately is not an automatic process like this uh, is like mostly automatic. I have to write the code and I actually have to push it and then I actually have to tag it when I'm ready for release, so I do have to do something. I can't just like telepathically release yet. <clears throat> but um, for, for Nexus Mods, I actually can just take that and throw it in there, and, and that would be, I think, the final step then, or uploading it wherever else you would want to go, if not Nexus Mods. So, um, excuse me. Thank you again for joining today, and tomorrow we'll be back, and we'll be rounding out the 6.0 content. We'll be looking at some of the things that I have planned locally and have added locally, and we'll be talking about, like, hmm, who wants to help out with testing and who wants to do what? So um, that having been said, thank you for joining me for this OpenMW Lua hackathon. And we'll eventually turn this into kind of a more easy to consume thing where we can help people learn how to get started. Um, and yeah, thanks everybody for joining. Have a lovely day. Happy modding. And we'll see you on the next stream.